What's up guys, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here, and I am so excited to introduce you to the PA in our practice. This is Colleen Johnson, and she's amazing. It took me a really long time to find her, right? It took me a really long time to find you, I think. So we were introduced from a mutual friend, Michelle, but you had actually already been interested in kind of the concept of muscle-centric medicine yes. anyway, prior, which is amazing. So tell us a little bit about your background and you. Sure. So um, obviously I'm a PA. I love what I do. Uh, I actually started in emergency medicine, which I always thought, you know, through all my schooling, that's really what I wanted to focus on. And then I started doing it and I saw this huge gap. Yeah. Like there's absolutely it's such a need for emergency medicine, but I was like, why are so many of these things that are preventable bringing people in, in emergent situations? Right. So I actually transitioned out of that um, into more private practice doing plastic and reconstructive surgery. And again, a lot of cancer patients, a lot of things that I felt maybe if they weren't preventable, they certainly could have been taken about in a different manner. Right. Um, and that's when I really started to focus more on functional medicine. Which is so cool. And what you guys are going to love is that Colleen is very interested in hormone replacement and peptides. So peptides is something that I use in my practice. I mean, I would love to hear you talk about some of your favorite peptides and what sure. you're looking for. And so obviously, of course, you know, for people who don't know, peptides are just, they're just chains of amino acids um, and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, proteins build Nobody's muscle. Never so, heard that here. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I love peptides, just there's tremendous therapeutic treatment benefits. Um, what I love is that the body produces them naturally. So we're not taking, you know, these man-made drugs and feeding them to people. We're using something that your body's producing already. We're just supporting it more. Um, which is a really, really I, great point, right? Right. What Colleen is saying, which is really important to understand, a lot of the people in the practice, and if you're part of my practice, you know, you probably came because you wanted more of an integrative type of practice. You wanted something that was a combination be, between traditional Western medicine and more holistic is not the right word, but maybe more natural approaches. And peptides, while they're not necessarily natural, Colleen is absolutely right. And we'll talk about some examples of peptides and what they're used for but it is not at the same, the body doesn't recognize it the same way it would a drug. Exactly, exactly. Um, they have, you know, we started to play like a really significant role in disease state management. Um, there's tons of athletes that use them. They're great so for- favorite peptide. Them. I wanna know your favorite peptide. <sighs> it's probably a tie. Um, okay. I love BPC-157. And I also love Ipamorlin CJC-1295. Okay, okay. So those so, are two peptides we use in the practice and love. Tell me why you use BPC or why you like BPC. And I actually, I think it's amazing. And mm -hmm. um, I'll let you go and, and explain some of the purposes. Sure. But, um, so BPC is, it stands for body protective compound or body protective complex. Um, and it's actually derived from gastric juices found in the stomach. So its job there is really to like renew and repair our intestinal tract. What's also incredible is that it helps with healing, <clears throat> excuse me. So it helps heal um, and protect like endothelial tissues. It mm -hmm. actually targets some of the genes that help form collagen. So a lot of research has shown that it can accelerate the healing of damaged tendons, muscle, yes. bones, teeth, intestines, like the list goes on and on. Yes. And it can be given injectable or oral. Yes. Do you have a preference? It really depends on the thing, you know, the person. And if there's an injury, you yep. know, if someone has, you know, a, t a tear in their bicep tendon, I would love to utilize injectable PC. I have now I've used this protocol in a lot of seals that have injured mm -hmm. themselves. I had one guy, he, and you know, it's jumping out of a plane. Didn't, didn't no land, deal, right? really, he was really a new guy, deal. didn't land right. Um, and of course, listen, um, Peptides are not the end all be all. It's not going to, you know, uh, repair a completely busted knee where it is an adjunct to, it's an adjunct to a healing process. So for example, okay. guys, right. So guys that go through regenerative medicine. So one of the seals that, you know, just most recently had a total knee reconstruction. We also added BPC and something called TB 500, um, 
uh, you know, we, we did BPC twice a day. He did two injections and then a TB 500 injection. And we had a healing protocol for a series of weeks for him worked really well. And we've used that multiple times for injuries. The other way in which BPC is fantastic, this, but, you know, body protective compound is orally and individuals that have esophageal issues that have gastrointestinal issues that just don't seem to heal. It's very beneficial. Again, not everybody, not everyone is a responder, which becomes very interesting. And of course, where you get the peptide matters. Right. Absolutely. And I love, I love your combo. Um, it yes. just, you know, it just gives that body a little extra. Yes. Um, couldn't agree with you more. And then of course, optimizing for hormones, sleep, those kinds of things. Now let's talk about, um, CJC and mm -hmm. Tell me why you love it, what you're using it for, what you've actually seen really have the biggest impact. Sure. So obviously it's a combination peptide, the combination mm -hmm. of two, um, this really helps to kind of facilitate growth hormone, releasing hormone. So, you know, in other words, it increases growth hormone production and IGF-1, but in a safe and well-tolerated manner. So I love it for body composition. Um, more immediate, it actually helps improve that Delta sleep. So Delta you sleep- the Delta sleep peptide that they don't have anymore? There, no. there was a, I actually, I used to use this. It was a, a Delta sleep peptide worked really, really well. And yeah. That's gone now. So the, more immediately I find patients- you know, if you're having trouble with sleep, there's probably some hormone dysregulation, maybe your cortisol's elevated. Um, so people that are really focused with body composition, yeah. I love using this for it. Um, it helps stimulate muscle development with mass and strength. It also helps decrease body fat, improves recovery time. So just tremendous benefits all around. So I've had a few patients say they feel like their cognition improved, mm -hmm. but. And that could overall. be because their sleep gets better, right? So right. their cognition improves and sleep gets better. What do you see a length of time that an individual needs to utilize CJC and Ipamorlin before they see results? I usually have them really commit to like two to three months. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, anything, any other peptides that you love? I'm totally on board with you. The CJC and Ipamorlin, we have been using MK677 and mm -hmm. MK677. Uh, I don't know if you've used much of MK677. Not a ton, but I, I love. Time. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you for the guys that really struggle to put on muscle mass and Shane loves this, um, mm -hmm. MK677 works really well. It the thing is, is it can put on a ton of water weight, like a ton. Yeah. I mean, you might gain 10 pounds in a week. Wow. I've had some patients gain 20 pounds, lose the water weight and have 10 pounds of muscle. Remain. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Typically don't recommend it for women, but this is something <laughs> that if an individual is really looking to put muscle mass on, it does work really well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that you're really good at, which is one of the reasons I was so excited, then there was a couple of reasons that I was very excited that you were going to come into the practice. And I'm going to tell our listeners this. Well, number one, if you don't know, for me, I'm much more interested in the attribute and the character of an individual skill can be taught. We expect that there is a skill set that is there, but also that can be trained up. Ultimately, what is most valuable is having an individual who really has integrity. You won't find anyone in my practice that doesn't. You won't find anyone in my practice that isn't an incredible human being. The culture doesn't allow for it. Right. And actually calling his military family. Dr. Twyman is also a former Navy and that really lends itself to people that are operating with the highest service in mind. And speaking of which, she is an expert in hormone replacement. And really you deal with a lot of men. Me too. Yeah. Tell me, okay. So tell us, tell everybody watching one of some of just the strategies that you use for hormone replacement for men. Sure. So testosterone or Clomid or HCG. What's your favorite? All of the above. All yeah. the above. Um, I always start with blood work, of course. You know, we yeah. want like a really solid baseline. I like patients to have a full physical. We need to know yep. what we're working with. You can't just prescribe to have, you know, testosterone or any of these things without right. knowing what else is going on. Um, Clomid, I like. 
I find patients usually will start with Clomid as like a baseline and then they're ready for the next step, yeah. whether it's, you know, HCG combo or testosterone. Um, all of my patients truthfully do really, really well on testosterone. Yes. Um, and there's a lot great. of, yes, testosterone is great. And actually we prescribe testosterone for women. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Um, a lot of men do sub Q injections sub Q injections have a greater tendency. And, you know, there is a few papers in the literature about this sub. So intramuscular injections tend to, um, uh, convert more to estrogen. There's just more of an aromatization versus sub Q tends to not convert as much. And I think there's only one or two papers about that, but really if an individual <clears throat> has issues with estrogen, then I typically recommend sub Q. Um, and we do in our practice, a mix for the most part of 80 of an 80, 20 mix. We use a sipionate propionate, uh, mix. Um, let me see what else. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else to add to that. No, I think, you know, I think yeah. it's, I think we have to also get rid of the stigma against it too. Yeah. People think, oh, it's a bodybuilder thing, or it's, you know, something people are doing in gym locker rooms and it's not the case, you know, it's, it's very, unfortunately, very common and very normal now to have both men and women lower testosterone levels. Yes. And, yes. And oh, that's what I was going to talk about is that <clears throat> women actually, you know, and also, um, cream works well, but cream mm -hmm. increases DHT. It, sends, it tends to convert more to the more anabolic side of testosterone. Really it's, it's a different component. So for women, sub Q injections actually works very well. Um, I mean, a lot of women don't like to inject themselves, so you can do topical, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> don't rub it on your face. Um, <laughs> and again, this is not medical advice, you guys. We are just here. I really wanted to introduce Colleen. This is going to be a series of videos. We're going to come on just like Don and I have come on to help educate you. We'll probably talk through some cases. And um, I really just want you to get to know her. She's wonderful. So <laughs> if you are interested, Colleen is in our clinic. And um, that's where you can find her. Happy to be here. Yeah.